Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. I don't know. It seems like it's hard to believe that it's almost June already in a, another year of Horse Center, and we're on our way to Saratoga for the Belmont Stakes. Saratoga for the Belmont Stakes. That's uh, something you don't hear every day. But, uh, of course, with the Belmont renovations, that's where we're going. And, Matt, we're going to do an early preview on uh, the big Belmont Stakes this year, a mile and a quarter this year, two million buckaroos at Saratoga. Of course, they can't really run a mile and a half at Saratoga on the main track. So here we are, a mile and a quarter. We think it's going to attract a pretty good field, Matt. And we're going to start with the horses that we consider to be most probable uh you only see six there we we are expecting more don't, don't worry it's not going to be a six horse field but these are the horses that uh, are most likely now uh 10 days out from the Beaumont Stakes Matt and we'll start with Sierra Sierra Leone I, I've seen a lot of people down on this horse because he's lugging in yeah it's not a good habit Matt but he's I, I think he ran a great race in the Kentucky Derby I think he's the horse to beat at a mile and a quarter and uh, any talk of fierceness being the favorite in the Belmont Stakes, I, I think, is a mistake. I think at this point, Brian, uh, after the Kentucky Derby, uh, the, the the fierceness bandwagon will have at least a f uh, some fewer number of uh, people on it. And, and yeah, Sierra Leone definitely deserves the to be the favorite. That second in the Kentucky Derby he was just a. Uh, nose uh, head away from winning that race. And I know that they have been tinkering with equipment a little bit. There's going to be a rider change uh, on Sierra Leone. So uh, hopefully that uh, lugging out thing will improve as uh, they make some changes and, and he's got a little more experience. Yeah. Yeah. Still lightly race, Matt. Uh, uh, two, uh, small noses, the Remsen Stakes, and of course the big one, the Kentucky Derby, away from being an undefeated horse after five career starts. Seven, fig seven figure uh, dollar purchase back in the day. The son of Gunrunner is a strapping individual who rallies strongly every time uh, he was uh, uh, stalled uh, on the turn. Uh, Forever Young actually got the jump on him because of traffic. And, and then he came running and, and picked up Forever Young. And of course they uh banged each other most of the churchill down stretch as sierra leone was lugging in pretty good so uh, sierra leone easily could have won that race uh, second by nose forever young easily could have won that race but uh mystic dan got the win but sierra leone uh, decides uh, a few issues and maybe they'll have that uh, cleared up flavian prop as you mentioned flavian prop will be uh aboard uh replacing tyler gaff leone who rode for chad brown in the derby on sierra leone and the preakness on Tus tuscan gold so an interesting rider change uh i think he's the horse to beat but uh, as i said a lot of people are saying fierceness should be the favorite and they love this pattern matt of every other race I i'm not big on the other every other race pattern but uh it's true so far for fierceness yeah, no, I, I'm not either. I actually think that's a little that's a little silly. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's certainly more of a question why, uh, as to why uh, uh, fierceness seems to only run his race when he can get to the lead clearly and and not have any difficulties in the race again. Maybe that's because of his his inexperience or or he he just doesn't have it in him to battle. I don't know. So many questions about it, but, uh, uh, you know, certainly I'm not one to, to totally dismiss fierceness. Yeah. You can't dismiss him. You can't dismiss him. He's, uh, one at Saratoga. He's won over the track. Of course, that was his debut performance. Fierceness was impressive there as he was, of course, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile and, uh, extremely impressive in the Florida Derby this year. But uh, those three bad races, uh, those three poor races, the Kentucky Derby last time where he finished 15th, 
I'm not sure a mile and a quarter is his best distance. Um, in fact, you would easily say it's not his best distance yet uh, after the only one try at it. So I think there's question marks. And, and if you're assuming that fierceness, yeah, he only runs every other time. So now he's going to run a big race in the Belmont. Maybe, but uh, I wouldn't certainly count on it. And, and there is other speed in the race, Matt. And there's other speed here on this probables list because Seize the Gray is getting better. I'm I'm getting convinced that Seize the Gray is getting better. I looked at his uh, path day and his briefness again. And uh, this is a horse, a son of Arrogate. Sons of Arrogate, daughters of Arrogate figure to get better, as, as did Arrogate this time of year. Sees the gray is getting better, and he's got speed. At the very least, I, I think that's a question or or a problem for fierceness. Yeah, I think so. You know, and and hey, Brian, uh, there's no question that uh, sees the gray is getting better. His last two races have have just flat out been uh, been very good, and 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 nobody's better than D Wayne Lucas about running horses when they are. Uh, uh, in shape and when they are at their best. And I feel that sees the gray is that way. And yeah, you know, they're going to, they're going to have a long run to the first turn because it's a mile and a quarter and a mile and a quarter at, uh, at, at Saratoga starts way, way, way up the stretch up by the, the uh, final turn. So they're going to have plenty of uh, space to run in there, but uh, you know, for Seize the Gray, I think that's good. But again, that scenario for fierceness may not be particularly good. Yeah, and yeah, it might not be particularly good for Seize the Gray too if they go head and head. But fierceness is the one who's shown that he has trouble when he's really pressured earlier or, or he doesn't have things go his own way and sees the gray would seem to be a horse that could make that happen again in the belmont and again sees the gray had a nice workout since the preakness came back with a 113 the other day and uh moving in the right direction for the uh about to be 89 year old trainer d wayne lucas or i guess he just did turn 89 matt uh, uh, a living legend, of course, in the racing game. The fourth horse on this probable list is a horse that I'm growing to like more and more, Ant Antiquarian. Um, he had a lot of trouble. The Louisiana Derby, after a nice maiden win, was his third career start. Not only did he break through the starting gate before the race, but then he got banged at the start. He had some traffic on the turn. Uh, yeah, he finished sixth, but he was only beaten by four lengths, a little over four lengths in that Louisiana Derby. And that was a mile three sixteenth coming from a maiden race. Bounced back with a nice Peter Pan win uh, at Aqueduct, Belmont at Aqueduct. Uh, I think Antiquarian is certainly a horse moving in the right direction. Yeah, I think so, Brian, for uh, for Todd Pletcher. Uh, and Pletcher, of course, has won the Belmont Stakes four times already. I, there doesn't seem to be anybody that's better at identifying horses for the Belmont Stakes than than Todd Pletcher. You know, we, we hear throughout the Derby Trail and the Triple Crown races people uh, on – social media proclaiming, oh, I found my Belmont horse, you know, when they saw some horse run this way or that way. But I don't know. I don't do that. I defer to Todd Pletcher about uh, being pretty good about identifying horses for the Belmont. Yeah, Pletcher's had Pletcher's had good success. There's no doubt that this is his best uh, of the three legs of the Triple Crown and based at Belmont or, or Saratoga, if you will. Uh, certainly, Pletcher is a positive uh, as as the trainer of Antiquarian, and we'll go back to fierceness. We'll bounce back to fierceness. Uh, Pletcher has uh, up to four possibilities, but the the two biggest probably being fierceness and Antiquarian. Uh, that that would be a uh, a positive for, for fierceness because I did give you some negatives there before on the extremely talented two year old champion. Uh, Honor Marie, we should talk about Honor Marie a little bit, Matt, because Honor Marie was a horse we both thought was a live long shot in the Kentucky Derby. Uh, the son of Honor Code really didn't have a good trip when he was eighth in the Kentucky Derby. I don't know that I believe that he's suddenly going to rally better than Sierra Leone, for instance, in this mile and a quarter race at Saratoga. But I think it's a race where we can mostly draw a line through, at least for Honor Marie. And he's a horse uh, who, who's rested. 
uh, through the Preakness. And now with a better trip and a new jockey, maybe Anna Marie is a horse to think about here in the Belmont. Yeah, I'm certainly going to think about Anna Marie uh, in uh, in the Belmont Stakes. Uh, we liked her early uh, on the Derby Trail, and, and there's no reason to like her any less now after her performance in the Kentucky Derby, where uh, she finished, uh, where he finished, excuse me, a creditable uh, eighth place after a really uh, uh, difficult and rough trip. Yeah, it was a bad trip from the start for Honor Marie. That jockey change, uh, Florent Cheru, will now be aboard Honor Marie uh, in the Belmont. And uh, Honor Marie, of course, was second, a good second in the Louisiana Derby before that. Doorknock, Doorknock, uh, Mage's full brother, Matt, sent a good magic for Danny Gargan, uh, was uh, a, a hot commodity at the end of the two year old year when he nosed out the uh, lightly raced Sierra Leone in the Remsen. This year, he did get a Fountain of Youth win, but I, I don't see any of his starts yet, including, of course, a 10th in the Kentucky Derby, were, were a big move forward for the Son of Good Magic. No, I agree with you, Brian, on that. Uh, but I, at least I could say that his 10th place performance in the Kentucky Derby, I probably don't consider a step in the wrong direction. Yeah, it wasn't a step in the wrong direction. We thought he might show speed. His trainer said he was uh, planning on showing speed in the Derby. There was a lot of speed in the Derby, but it wasn't from Doorknock. He is a horse who has some gameness to him and seems to fight on, and, and distance of the, the 10 furlongs probably wouldn't be a problem for Doorknock, but uh, it's hard to jump on the Doorknock bandwagon after what we've seen in his races so far this year. All right, Matt, the next list, of course, is the possibles list. Uh, we really do expect... Kenny McPeak to have one horse in the Belmont, I would think. Uh, he's got the Kentucky Derby winner. He's got the Kentucky Oaks winner lined up. They're actually going to work out uh, on uh, Saturday, the 1st at Saratoga. And uh, McPeak said a decision on their next race will come after that workout. Uh, it sounds like they're both doing good. It makes me think that maybe Mystic Dan is going to be the horse that runs uh, in all three legs of the Triple Crown, and, and Torpedo Anna goes uh, stays with the Phillies for the Acorn. I think that's the scenario that I would prefer to see from these uh, Kenny McPeak uh, runners. Uh, Mystic Dan, you know, the, the win in the Kentucky Derby, a nice, uh, a really good second uh, in the Preakness, chasing a horse that got everything their way in uh, – in Seas de Grey, it makes sense for me to miss for Mystic Dan to go in the Belmont Stakes. And, you know, honestly, I, I would rather see Thorpino Anna run in the Acorn. I don't want to see this, this you know, talented, talented Philly uh, uh, find any difficulty running against the boys in the Belmont Stakes. Yeah, especially if it's a big field in the Belmont. Uh, as you see, we have 13. That list is going to dwindle down. In fact, it is dwindling down as we speak. But uh, yeah, I think that would be a tough spot if, if there's 10 or more uh, uh, boys in this Belmont. Uh, I think it would be a tough spot as much as I like Torpedo Anna. I've been a fan of these McPeak horses. Uh, as much as I like Torpedo Anna, I think the nine furlong grade one acorn the day before the Belmont makes a lot of sense for the impressive Kentucky Oaks winner. As for Mystic Dan, I think McPeak was waiting to see it both, at both after the Derby and after the Preakness if, if this a uh, slightly smaller son of golden sense showed any wear and tear or any uh, being any worse for wear from the Derby and then the Preakness. And so far it looks good. Uh, of course, as I said, we'll know more after this workout on June one, but um, uh, I, I think that's what McPeak is, is waiting to see. And so far all, all, all signs are good coming from Saratoga for the Derby winner, the Preakness runner up, as you mentioned. So uh, yeah, it looks like Mystic Dan is going to be one of those rare horses nowadays to run in all three legs with a win in a second. Uh, first thing I thought of was uh, Genuine Risk, Matt, which was 44 years ago, but uh, she was kind of an upset winner of the Kentucky Derby, came back to run a second in the Preakness. She was, of course, second in that Belmont. Oh, I've got way too much uh, races in my uh, library in my brain to think of. But uh, anyway, that's what I thought of uh, comparatively for Mystic Dan. It's nice to know that he's at least bouncing back healthy from these races. And we look forward to seeing both McPeak runners, whichever races uh, they uh, they appear at Saratoga. Uh, one of the more interesting horses on the list, and we'll go back to that trainer, Todd Pletcher, Matt, is Mind Frame. 
mind frame is a son of constitution. Uh, if you miss the maiden win, which was big, you probably didn't miss the allowance win Kentucky Derby weekend at Churchill Downs. Another big win for mind frame who looks like he could be any kind, but he's only had two lifetime races. I agree, Brendan. Another, another really good runner from, uh, the sire constitution, uh, um, those two races, I guess we can really only describe as brilliant uh, performances. I think Todd Pletcher, uh, he, as we have talked about, has a number of horses in here. And I think I've heard that he is also considering the Ohio Derby for mind frame. Yeah, I, I even heard possibly the Pegasus at Monmouth Park is another another possibility for mind frame. Uh, bottom line is here, I guess if he's doing too good, to keep in the stall on Belmont Stakes, they'll, they'll, they'll give him a shot. But it seems like from what they're talking about, maybe another spot would be better, at least for now. His third lifetime race for the uh, – it could be any kind again. I think he would be over bet, and, and you see that in our uh, odds here on Mindframe. Uh, eight to one on a horse who's only had a maiden and allowance race going into the tough Belmont – would be a little bit hard to take, but I think he would get that if he's in the field. Uh, Tuscan Gold, we're also waiting for confirmation from Chainer Chad Brown on the son of Medaglio Dora. Pretty lightly raced, Matt, very lightly raced, I guess you could say, only four starts. Um, a decent race in the Louisiana Derby, a decent race in the Preakness, but then again, not enough to say, oh, Tuscan Gold is on the verge of something big, but I wouldn't put it past him. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him, particularly if it's a fast track. I think Chad came out and said that uh, Tuscan Gold really didn't seem to take to the wet racing service most of the way in the Preakness. And I like uh, uh, jockey Tyler Gaffleon, but I, I wonder if him being well off the pace in the Preakness, and maybe it was just the track, but well off the pace in the Preakness is – uh, another reason why maybe Brown took him off the other horse, Sierra Leone, the big horse, Sierra Leone in the Belmont. I, I'm not sure. That's just conjecture on my part. But Tustin Gold's still an interesting horse with four lifetime starts. The Wine Steward, meanwhile, has been in many stakes races, Matt, and has never finished worse than second, although he's got a little bit of seconditis working, the, 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 the fine New York Redford trainer, Mike Maker of late, coming off a second in the Peter Pan last time. Yeah, a little bit of a break. Uh after a busy uh, uh, Kentucky Derby trail heading into the Peter Pan and and ran a good second uh, behind Antiquarian. So, again, not a horse that you can easily dismiss. Yeah, he, he's a horse. A mile and a quarter will be interesting, but he's got some breeding to handle a mile and a quarter. And it, he he wasn't well beaten in any of those uh, seconds. He's had three straight seconds after winning his first three races. Second uh, last fall in the grade one Breeders' Futurity at uh, Keeneland. And then his return, he's been good, but second best to uh, uh, Encino in the uh, Lexington Stakes at Keeneland. And then, as Matt said, Antiquarian in the Peter Pan last time. He could move forward, but uh, a long shot. As is protective, protective would be the uh, longest of Pletcher's four horses here that are Belmont possible. But uh, if you look at that Peter Pan, just take a look at protective. Also a, a Rapoli stable runner. Um, he did not have the best of trips, and he was running in the stretch in that Peter Pan. Uh, I guess what I'm saying, it was a sneaky good effort for the horse who's been third in a couple graded stakes in New York coming up to the Belmont. Yeah, and, and certainly a horse that will appreciate the added distance in the mile and a quarter Belmont stakes. Another Medaglia Doro, and this went out of a very, very good uh, uh, mare who was an excellent runner in Grace Hall. Yeah, and if you're talking about excellent mares, uh, the best bred horse on this entire list is Batten Down. He's a son of Tappet out of closed hatches. And closed hatches, of course, was an excellent, excellent runner. She's becoming an excellent broodmare. This one had a nice maiden win, Matt. But you heard today that they are going to skip the Belmont. And it looks like they're headed to one of your old stomping grounds. Yeah, I, I just saw this morning that the ownership group has decided to send uh, this Belmont runner to 
the Ohio Derby at Thistledown. Yeah, as impressive as his maiden win last time at Churchill Downs was, it was only a maiden win. So he's the least uh, accomplished horse on this list. So uh, probably doing right by the horse to skip the Belmont and find something a little bit lighter in the Ohio Derby next time for Batten Down. All right, that's our early preview of the Belmont Stakes. We'll know, of course, uh, much more when we talk about the Belmont Stakes and other big stakes during the festival at Saratoga uh, next week on Horse Center. But that's where we are now. We also want to talk about Stephen Foster Preview Day, Matt, which is Saturday, this Saturday at Churchill Downs. And uh, six stakes, 275000 each. I guess that adds up to $1.65 million in these six stakes at Churchill Downs. So it's a re really nice card Saturday. Uh, the, the headliner of the card is the Grade 3 Blame, named after the Breeders' Cup Classic winner of years ago. And uh, it, it drew a good field of 11. Uh, Matt, this would be the local prep again for the grade one Stephen Foster, which would be run on June 29th at Churchill Downs. Uh, let's start from the rail out. Frosted Departure is uh, probably a longer shot in this field, but uh, uh, he's he's run some good races. He's got speed on the rail and he's coming off a couple straight wins, Matt. And uh, the last one was probably his best race yet. Yeah, uh, for Kenny McPeak, uh, Sue. We have been bringing up a lot the last uh, few weeks. Uh, two nice wins in a row, an allowance at uh, Keeneland, and a minor stakes race at Oaklawn Park, but certainly seems to be one that's uh, at the top of his game right now. Yeah, coming in with good form. There, are other, there is other speed in this mile and a, a furlong, nine furlong race. Uh, Saturday, race 10 at Churchill Downs, by the way. Uh, you're looking at our odds, uh, the, the horse center odds, uh, which we do earlier in the week than the morning line generally comes out. We have now seen the morning line. And Highland Falls, uh, ahead of Tapa Trice, I was a little surprised to see Highland Falls is the favorite. And and I guess that's recent form, Matt, because the very well-bred son of Curlin, he's at Round Pond, uh, has uh, uh, has developed this year, and he's uh, looks like he's on the verge of something coming off uh, a couple of good graded stakes tries out in California and then Arkansas. Yeah, and I'm sure that uh, morning line decision has something to do with the uh, trainer, that is Brad Cox, who certainly takes a lot of action uh, at the windows. And, and this one not only is... Uh, uh, in good form right now, but he started out his career pretty impressively, also winning three out of four races in his career. But but that most recent second place finish in the Oaklawn Park handicap, a Grade Two race, uh, was a really good performance. Uh, a race that got pretty high speed figures, also. Yeah, Highland Falls certainly uh, heading in the right direction. And with that curling round pond breeding, you would expect him to get good or get better as he matures. And it seems to be happening. Highland Falls, a big player in here. Number three, War Campaign. We have him higher. Uh, the morning line had him down as the fourth choice, actually. Tyler Gaffleon for uh, trainer Phil Sims will ride. Uh, War Campaign has been knocking on the door a little bit, I guess, kind of like Highland Falls. Uh, he, he has won three times at Churchill Downs against lesser competition, three out of six lifetime at Churchill Downs. But the five-year-old son of Declaration of War is getting better. He won a minor stake at Oakland earlier this year, and he's run second in a couple of uh, better stakes the last two. Yep, uh, a second in the Ben Ally, a grade three, and a second in the Essex, which was at uh, Oakland Park. So uh, uh, this guy's running well at at different tracks you already mentioned his form at churchill downs yeah the next horse on the list is uncle jake and if you look at uncle jake's recent form you have to like what you see he's been uh getting better of late getting better and better uh and coming off a pretty big win last time the thing with uncle jake though is those races were either on all weather surfaces one of them two starts back or the other two, uh, his last race and three starts back, were races taken off the turf. So not only is he moving up in class, but he hasn't been facing real dirt horses in those races. So it, it might be a tough spot for the streaking Uncle Jake. Yeah, he's got three wins in a row, like you mentioned, uh, Brian, with uh, uh, an allowance race at Keeneland and an allowance at Turfway Park 
and and at fairgrounds, but like you mentioned, the circumstances, the type of track surfaces, and those races were not particularly fast. Yeah, Uncle Jake will be a long shot, uh, Joel Rosario, but, uh, you know, beware the horse with three straight wins. Number five is Tapa Trice, the horse I, I expect to be favored in here. Tapa Trice is one of two for trainer Todd Fletcher. Flavian Pratt will ride. Uh, Tapa Trice, of course, one of the uh, of the names of last year's Kentucky Derby Trail. He won the Tampa Bay Derby. He won the Bluegrass. Uh, a little disappointing in the Kentucky Derby, but he bounced back to be third in the Belmont. Disappointing in the Haskell, but third in the Travers. We haven't seen him since the Travers, though, Matt, about nine months ago. Yeah, I mean, you know, you have to be a little bit concerned about coming into a a race, a quality race like the Blame uh, after that much time off. But I agree with uh, with Todd Pletcher as a trainer and Flavian Pratt uh, as the rider and, and a lot of good things to look at in his past performances that he's going to take his share of the money. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder about a, a big kind of lumbering type a little bit off such a long layoff, but, but Pletcher's one who brings him back sharp off layoff. So we'll see again. I think he's going to be the favorite over Highland Falls. We'll see. Uh, third choice on the track morning line is Dreamlike, and I really shouldn't like Dreamlike, Matt. I, I look at his lifetime record of one of eight, and and that does not inspire me to uh, uh, go jump on his bandwagon in what is a grade three, but probably better than your average grade three race here. But on the other hand, Dreamlike has run some really good races along the way. Yeah, uh, a nice uh, uh, second place finish in an allowance race uh, at uh, Keeneland in the uh, – in the spring meeting, he ran in the Beater, Breeders' Cup Classic and finished eighth. But I think the most noteworthy performance uh, for Dreamlike was a second in the Pennsylvania Derby. And uh, that was a race that, again, uh, was a pretty strong performance overall. Yeah, it was definitely a strong performance, beating only a half length, rallying down that sloppy track at Parks last fall. Uh, also, he was narrowly beaten as a still still as a maiden in the Wood Memorial. He had a big maiden win after that. There's there's been a couple of races that trouble me a little bit, but on his best, Dreamlike certainly is a uh, real contender here in the blame. Uh, a couple of horses next, Matt, that are kind of old friends. Uh, we've seen them for years and we've seen them run well. They're both millionaires, but I'm not sure that the uh, the form of Classic Causeway or Last Samurai is uh, giving me a lot of uh, big hope for, for this race in the blame. Yeah, and for both of them, it's been a pretty long time since they've found their way into the winner's circle. Certainly with Classic Causeway, you got to scratch your head a little bit about the kind of races that uh, he's been uh running in my friend uh, Andy Serling is constantly saying about classic causeway that this horse is not a horse that should be running in long distances that this horse should be running around one turn is he better on turf is he better on dirt uh, he, he's a nice horse any way you slice it but yeah he he's done a lot of different things long on turf long on dirt shorter on dirt shorter on turf last time he, he faded badly in a mile and a half race although the winner there next is kind of a mile and a half monster of the two that we're talking about i think classic causeway is the more interesting of the two could bounce back with a little bit better effort but there's other speed in here and that form as we said for the kenny mcpeak trainers just not quite good enough last samurai i think is better at oakland park and uh, he looks to be going in the wrong direction now after a long career. Number nine is a very interesting horse as well, Matt, because Cagliostro for trainer Sherry DeVoe ran some good races as a three-year-old, some promising races as a three-year-old, I guess a little bit like Dreamlike. And it was him and Dreamlike that both returned together last time in that allowance race. And Cagliostro uh, was, the, was the winner. It was, it was narrow and Dreamlike was running hard at the end, but Cagliostro got the win in that uh, recent allowance race. And Cagliostro also ran a good race on that Pennsylvania Derby uh, undercard uh, in the Smarty Jones. So a similarity, another similarity. Uh, he is trained by Cherie DeVoe, the former uh, Brad Cox trainer. And I don't know, Brian, it might be hard to find a trainer who's more hot than uh, 
uh, Sherry DeVoe after her performance uh, at uh, Pimlico on Preakness Weekend. Yeah, this is this is a three year old who uh, kind of was knocking on the door a little bit last year. And maybe uh, if he's uh, matured for a hot trainer, as you say, uh, a real threat here in his second start. Uh, interesting for me to see what Dreamlike and Cagliostro do coming out of that contested allowance race last time. More speed in the 10, five star general. He's a horse who's run some good races over the years, but maybe never quite this good. With other speed in the race, I, I'm not jumping on five star general in this spot. Yeah, I mean, some good performances. Uh, he's got a third in the, the Knicks Go, a second in the Evangeline Downs Mile, and a fourth in the Louisiana, kind of hanging around in those races. Yeah, it kind of hanging around, and, and and when he's had the right spot over the years, he has won some nice stakes races, but uh, probably a tough spot here. The time form U.S. pace projector that we're finally throwing up here uh, ha has Five Star General actually as the leader, the speed of the speed, but you'll see Frosted Departure and Uncle Jake close, uh, the horse we're about to talk about, Trademark, as well as Cagliostro, and let's not forget Classic Causeway, who I think will be even more forwardly placed than chosen this projector, uh, all have some early speed. So the blame looks like uh, that this pace will be contentious in this time for a long race. Number 11 is Trademark. And Trademark, while Vicky Oliver has a horse who you don't always know what you're going to get, he's been best at Churchill Downs. And that really came through last fall when he was a winner, an upset winner of the grade two Clark. Yep, uh, an upset winner. He was 13 to 1 on that day. And, and uh, before that, was second in the Lucas Classic, second in the Islin um, at Monmouth Park. Uh, 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 this year, things have not gone as well, but, you know, they were in tough races. Uh, he ran in the Pegasus World Cup and was 10th, and most recently was 7th in the Ali Sheba. So uh, he's certainly going to have to find that old form. Yeah, and 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 to his credit, that seventh in the Al Sheba came on an off track, so that that was a, a Kentucky Oaks Day. So uh, maybe the off track had something to do with it. Although he has won on off tracks before, so yeah, you do got to question the form this year. But uh, Churchill Downs trademark, you never know, a dangerous runner. All right, folks, that's our uh, early preview of the Belmont, our preview of Saturday's Blame Stakes, Stephen Foster preview day, good card there, Matt. Let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. We got to do our. How about we do our picks first uh, for the. Well, good. For, good thing you blame. mentioned it. Yeah, you go first with your top I pick will. in the blame. Absolutely, Brian. Uh, uh, interesting field in the blame as we did the rundown. Uh, uh, not too many horses that we were quick to dismiss. I'm going to go with uh, Highland Falls, as you see up on the screen. I really liked. Uh, that performance in the Oakland Park handicap that seems to have this Brad Cox runner going in the right direction. Yeah, Highland Falls certainly is is one of the ones to beat in there. I, I'm I'm on Dreamlike. I like his prep where he just missed to Cagliostro. Uh, some of his performances as a three year old make me think that he's still got big things. Uh, to get done. He hasn't got it done yet, but I, I, I think he could. And, and Dreamlike is the horse I'm looking for. I like him better of the two Pletchers just because he's had the prep. And I think uh, this might be a better spot, nine furlongs. He, like Highland Falls and, and definitely Tapa Trice, should all be rallying in the stretch of this plan. An interesting race at Churchill Town. Can I get your top pick or your top pick? Can I get your parting shot now, sir? Absolutely, Brian. Uh, a lot going on. Um, we will be back next week uh, for our uh, Belmont Racing Festival ver edition of Horse Center after the, the draw for those races is complete. I will be in Saratoga uh, heading up there on, on Sunday, so I'll be there all week uh, and uh, enjoy your racing, Horse Center fans. Thanks for watching the show. Yeah, thank you for watching the show. If you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation, go ahead and do that. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like. Turn on those notifications. Leave us a comment if you want. Also, thank you to Candace Curtis for the race graphic this week of The Blame. 
our sponsor, the best contest site out there, that's Derby Wars. And of course, our pace projector that we use from Time Form US on a weekly basis. Next week, plenty to talk about Belmont Stakes, Met Mile, Acorn. Don't miss it right here on Horse Center. Until then, good luck. We'll see you then.